Hey, my name is Ellie and here's what happened this week in tech. We're going to be looking at plunges in crypto stock, beta stock. We're going to be looking at new gear from GoPro, Sure, and Rode. And we're going to be taking a look at all of the new features Apple's releasing with its iOS 16. So let's get into it. First, let's talk about the stocks. So Ethereum merged recently. There were lots of different companies that were mining Ethereum. They merged to reduce use of energy by 99%, which is massive. However, it caused a huge plummet in the value of Ethereum, which is pretty sad. But as we've seen in the cryptocurrency markets over the past year and a half or so, there's always a lot of fluctuation. Things will recover, but you just sort of have to write it out. I still wouldn't invest all my millions in it, but a little bit of money is fun to play with, especially if you're creative like me and you want to get into actually minting NFTs and other forms of cryptocurrency. Meta also dropped in value this week. It looks like the lack of trust in advertising dollars, people feeling uncertain about how much revenue Meta will actually generate, and a reduced market cap allowing competitors to take a lead have all contributed to that. A lot of people are unhappy with Facebook and Instagram right now, and I'm sure that overall general opinion around it has not helped. Now let's get into some fun news. Apple released its iOS 16 update this week, and it has a ton of fun new features to further customize your experience on iPhone. Again, this is not a paid ad. I just happen to love Apple products, so I want to dig into it a little bit. The first difference that you'll notice is the lock screen. So you can use different styles of clocks. You can also add widgets on your home screen for a quick update at a glance, and you can add live events like sports scores for games that are happening to just take a look without opening your phone. You can also create multiple lock screens and easily switch between them. And the focus mode has migrated over to your lock screen view, so you can further customize what you're seeing in focus mode and how you view the notifications that you've muted. There are also updates in the mail app. So there's improved search. There's also focus mode for the mail app, so you can mute certain notifications. They've added an unsend feature. They've added a schedule later feature. So a lot of these things are starting to rival the Gmail experience that we've had for a long time. But I personally appreciate that because if you're on an iOS, Chrome can really slow down your device. So it's nice to have some of the features that small business owners rely on migrating over being added to Apple, however you want to phrase that iMessage has also got quite a few updates. So you can edit a message after sending it, you can unsend a message, and you can mark messages as unread if you aren't ready to respond to them right away. There's also a new share play feature within messages where you can watch something together with synced playback and you can talk about it as you're watching, which I thought was a pretty fun way to do it. They've done a lot of security updates for Apple in general. A few that I think are pretty cool are the addition of pass keys, which is something similar to the last pass service that I've used for quite a while. And you can share some of your information like hotel information, login information in a secure way that can be revoked anytime with other people. If you're like me and you work in graphic design, or if you're a business owner, or you just enjoy using using your phone with photos, you can now natively remove the background in the Photos app, in screenshots, and in preview. That's pretty cool. So you can even open a photo, press on a subject, and then click and drag it over into an iMessage and share just what you cut out. It's a really nice feature to have. It helps you skip that extra step of going to a third party app. And I think it will have some really fun implications for future creative work. Have you ever been scrolling the internet and you see text inside a picture and there's nothing you can do about it? Well, now you have live text recognition in photo and video. If you see text on your screen, you can press on that text and Siri will come up with options like translate, call a phone number, identify currency. You can do that now even with text that's embedded in an image or a video. It's a great feature to have. Hopefully one day it will migrate over to websites so that Google's robots can recognize text and images, but for now it makes for a better searching and browsing experience on an iPhone at least, though it doesn't improve SEO. So stick with what you know for that. Apple says that it's improved dictation from Siri and it even has smart punctuation now. I'm not even going to cover it. I'll believe it when I see it. I haven't seen it yet. 
Maps now allow multiple steps, similar to Google Maps. You can add certain stops along a journey. So if you're like me and whenever you go on a road trip, you need to mark out your Starbucks stops, your souvenir stops. Now you can do that inside Apple Maps as well. I'm sure they're trying to bring traffic back to their Maps app. I never use it when I travel, especially because of features like that. So I'm sure as long as they continue improving the functionality of this feature, people will begin to use it more. Apple Pay has now added Apple Pay Later, so it can bring your payments into multiple steps instead of you paying it all at once. It's something like Later or After Pay. And more usefully, in my opinion, you can track receipts in your wallet now. So if you purchased with Apple Pay, you can get a quick look at those receipts right in your wallet, which is really convenient. The Help app now allows you to use your phone to track fitness information. So it starts to measure stride, distance walked, all of that without your Apple Watch. It's not as complete as your Apple Watch, but it is a good start. And it's nice to have if you're counting steps or trying to get a good idea of how much you're moving during the day. And the final update I'm gonna cover, even though there are a few more, is the improved home app experience. So they're making it easier to manage your smart devices with the Apple Home app, no matter what brand those devices are. Now let's get into some gear. So Shure has had sound isolating earphones for quite some time. They have four drivers, they have amazing sound quality, and now they've added some new features. In addition to new colors on the body, they have improved high frequency playback and additional settings for the filters inside those drivers so you can customize your listening experience. They also have the detachable cable as always, and when you attach their true wireless accessory, it becomes a wireless headphone with that same great audio quality. You can also attach different audio cables if you want to, but it's made for the true wireless and it's a pretty cool feature. Rode has released its new MTH100 Studio headphones. They're seeking to provide that detailed and clear sound without a lot of distortions and automatic suppression of ambient noise. All of these things are gonna make for a really great flat sounding pair of headphones that will allow you to mix and master with ease in an engineer or production setting. They're also just nice to listen to. And GoPro has released its Hero 11. Now this absolutely deserves its own video. There are so many features in this camera, but here's an overview of some of the improvements that they've made. So they've made their body even more compact. It has all of the same functionality and abilities as the 10, but it's improved its sensors, it's improved its stability, and now has cloud backup and live streaming features, and that's just to name a few. So I think I'm gonna actually check this out in a more in-depth video later, but it's a pretty exciting camera and you should absolutely just follow the link and take a look at it to see what it's all about. That's it for this week in tech. What surprised you the most and what did I miss? Drop it in the comments and let me know and I'll see you on Tuesday for a new gear demo. Have a great weekend.